I'm Akia. I'm Ashley. And, and we're, we're sisters, sisters addicted, addicted to, to Asian dramas and music. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk anymore like we used to. Hi, everybody, and welcome to podcast number 13. <laughs> I like how you gave me, like, the charge <laughs> of the numbers now. <laughs> okay. So we've had a interesting week since the last podcast. Right, right. Um, exciting. Exciting. Slightly sad, but still right. good things happened. So. Um, I just, we'll do a quick touch on it right now because I don't really want to harp on it. We kind of said our opinions of the subject in the last podcast. Right. But then literally the day after we recorded and was posting the next podcast, we woke up to some... Shocking news. Yes, disturbing news. And that headline, and I was at, at work, and I just happened to pull out my phone because I got the vibration, and I saw a notification from Sompi, and I saw the article title, mm. something about Top being unconscious, and I was like, whoa, what? See, I was on Twitter, and I'm just scrolling, and I, I follow Sompi, all K-pop, and a other, bunch of other people who do, like, specifically Top stuff mm. or K-pop stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I saw it, and I was just like, lie. All lies. And I scrolled past it, but then I saw it again, and I was just like, no. Like, I had to take a second, this, and I was like, I'm glad what? it was slow at work, too. Yeah. Because when I saw it, I was like, I had to take a, like, hold on a minute. I need to go read this and see what the hell is going yeah. on. Let me take my 15 right now. So, it, and it just kills me that some people were, there's still some people like, oh, well, he got what he deserved type <sighs> of thing. See, that's why I didn't read the comments either. I saw a couple things on Twitter. Where they were all good. They were all, like, supportive. And I'm just like, I'm right. so glad I didn't see any. And For I didn't the read, most part, yeah. Right. And I did not. I refused to read too much comments because I was scared that somebody was going to say something like that. Right. I, I didn't see so them angry, myself so personally. Upset. But I know there are some people, some other fans who said they saw some, not very few, but there were some comments were like, well, he did do something illegal, that type of thing. And I'm just like... Really? But the, it, the, even if you do something illegal, and it just goes to those same people, they have to believe in death penalty. They have to believe in the death penalty because they they did wrong, so they deserve wrong. Right. You know, it's not up to us to say what somebody deserves. I mean, there's a law, of course. Right. But I feel like the crime should fit, I mean, the punishment should fit the crime. True. And that did not in any way. And I just feel they, like, they, because I feel like he's not the first, since I've gotten into K-dramas and K-pop, he's not the first artist that I've heard of getting in trouble for marijuana, but I just feel like it It became him, and then I feel like, he, I don't know, maybe because he's my bias as a group, and yeah. I felt slightly protected, but I felt like he went into an almost manhunt in a sense, in right. a way. But I don't and, s- I was, and I was just understanding why. And that's what why. shocked me, too, right. when the first article came out. I was just like, why are you guys, like, killing him on this? Is it that serious? Right. It's and not. I'm, and so I feel like there's been other I celebrities like that have been gotten in trouble for it, and he didn't get this big. Maybe because he's top. It's got to be because he's top. He's YG. He's, like, one of the most popular k-pop artists out there who right. in the older crowd so they've done more we know more about them right. but i mean you know, come on still though but like i feel like they harped on it more than when like issues of rape came out like, right I'm that's like, what i'm bro, saying like who was he you hurting had, right you had so many people so many actors that had issues with sexual assault last year and yes those blew up but i feel like him testing positive for this blew up even bigger than some of those cases that were yeah. that we dealt with last year. And I'm just like, I'm not, and I, I don't want nobody to feel like I'm trying to give him a, a way out. Right. I right. understand what he did is wrong. Right. Regardless, wrong. Yes. But he's apologetic. He wants to serve his time. But y'all stress him out to the point that he gets like this. And I've told and I told Ashley this after we had recorded. I was like, I was worried something was going to happen to him because I know at least VIPs know. That Top is a little bit more sensitive than he gives off to the people right, that don't right. know Top on a fan level like VIPs would. Right. So that's the one thing that worried me. So when I saw the article, that would scared me even more. Mm. Because I was already slightly in the back of my mind thinking something might happen. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, we don't want to talk about it too long, but we were both very upset. It kind of actually ruined my mood for about a two days or so. Mm. Because it, I kept thinking about it. I'm like, oh my God. And it's like, He's unconscious. He's asleep. He's not awake. His eyes are not opening. That right. Oh God. Oh, so God. I'm glad that he's awake now, and they moved him to a different hospital, and he's gonna recuperate. 
I just want him to get so much better. And what I did love, though, is that all the different fandoms band together yeah. for this. Yeah. Like, no matter how many fan wars we have going on, all the armies, I don't forget the GOT7 fandom name, GOT7, all of them, Blinks, all of them supported right. top. Who's Blinks? Blackpink. Oh, fandom. I keep forgetting. I forgot they had that out. It just feels weird. I'm not sure if I'm accepting of that name yet. Yeah. Granted, we didn't get to vote, so I guess we don't have a say, but still, I'm just not right. sure how I feel about that name still. <laughs> Blinks. It just sounds super random. Yeah. With blinking. Yeah. But I know it's like Blackpink. Right. Put together, but right. it just, it's still, guys, come on. Well, I mean, hey. What? Yeah. But, so, yeah, but to bring up Blackpink, though, <gasps> yes. they are having a comeback. It's officially been announced Good. on a happier uh, note to happier YG news. Right. Um, and then also we had D Dragon that had a comeback. Oh, and, D Dragon. And what I loved is that I liked that the song that he released was a slow song. And we yeah. talked about this. We were saying, because I felt like it, because the timing of when it was getting released, yeah, it just, I felt like it would have felt odd if he had released an upbeat Super tempo. Super hype song, yeah. Right. It just wasn't the right time. So that slow song was really nice. But I feel like he's growing differently now. He's trying to show you that. He's still the old G-Dragon because I've listened to some of his other songs Mm -hmm. on the album. And you can still hear that original G-Dragon that you fell in love with, like from Heartbreaker Mm -hmm. and One of a Kind. Mm -hmm. That kind of G-Dragon. But with this song, we see a different side of G-Dragon. We don't see G-Dragon or, you know, GD. We see Kwon Jeong. Right. And what I like is that it's it's called, the album is called Untitled, right? Uh, no, it's called Kwon Jeong. Okay, then the song, I'm sorry, released. Self-titled album. album. Self-titled album, but the song that he did a video for, or at least that it's released already, is called Untitled, 2014. Right. So, it gets me feeling like most of these songs are songs that were written, not recently. Right. It couldn't have been, but I've also heard rumors. See, I don't know exactly, he might have already stated it at this point, but his birthday, 1988, 8, 18, you add all those up together, it makes 2014. Oh. It could be, it could be a lie, but but he likes to do stuff with his birthday. Right. So I would say, okay, I, that was believable. It's believable in that sense, right? Yes. And then somebody else said that it was named something else, but then the whole thing with top issue came about. He retitled it. Oh. But I feel like the birthday thing sounds more plausible. Than it might, it might have been. Untitled. He might have kept the 2014 in there to still keep the birthday thing, but he probably left it untitled because yeah. of. But I like. I like this song because when I first listened to it, I didn't know all this information. Mm-hmm. But I like the fa- fact that I was like, damn. Like, reading the lyrics and stuff, I was like, I feel like this, he was written in 2014, and he feels secure enough now to release, to release it. it. Like, that's the kind of person. You know how you, some people will have a diary or... I'm sure artists like him, like G-Dragon, who might write all the time, they have, like, a book of songs, some that you so listed never to release, are personal, and then there's songs that he knows, this is what I'm writing it for my fans, or I'm writing it because it's the movie I'm in, and I want you guys to hear it. Right. But this is a song, like, this is how I was feeling in 2014, and now I'm letting you guys know that, you know, I'm accepting of this. You can read my diary. Right. And the thing is, uh, we talked about this too a lot um, off podcast. Is that we like a lot of G Dragon's solo songs, solo slow songs, yeah, a lot more than we like his fast. Yes, I, I'm, I always can count G Dragon for an upbeat dance number, right, right? Whether it's his solo or with another member of the group or with a feature with someone else. But I know for me, like mm-hmm. a lot of times, his slow songs are usually the ones that stand out to me on his albums. Yeah, because I know for the I forget which album is with Black. Yeah, that was when I first heard. I was like, ooh, and then watching him perform, uh-huh. and then watching him perform it on the stage. It was just like, yeah, this is my, yeah, this is my, yeah, yeah. When he performs, it's pretty good. Granted, when he performs anything, it's good. But right. that you get a different feeling because it's a slow song, it's right. a powerful slow song. And that's a like because you can watch him show his true just being G Dragon or being. Not to say G Dragon being himself when he's performing. Kwon Jeong, he's being yeah, Kwon Jeong when he's performing his slow song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But GD, GD, I'll be honest, I love Top, but he he can be a biased record at times. So I try to stay away from. He's like that bad boy. You're like, no, I can't though. <laughs> right. You're not supposed to. Right. Because I will say this, Top was my original bias, and he will ever be. 
But G Dragon, I think after one of a kind, worked his way onto my bias list. Yeah. I like the simplicity of the video too. Right. And usually his slow songs don't really have too much a whole lot going on right. video wise either. I like that. He keeps it simple, makes you focus more on the song right. anyway. Right, that's true. Listen to this makes me want to go listen to that XX. Yes. Or you know, it's really that bastard, but Right. And the funny thing is, like, when that song came out, I didn't realize it, because at the time, I was only learning whatever Korean I was pulling from K-dramas. Yeah. But now that I know the language, I was like, oh, now, like, I see what you did there. (laughs) Because, I mean, because you really called that bastard. I mean, in America, we could. We could do that kind of stuff. Right. People put, like, shit, you know, all the F words, F bombs, I would not say it all, but... (laughs) On their album as their music. Right. You know, even though it's labeled something, they don't cover that up. Because anybody can read that. But right. he put that XX. And I feel like not because he's Korean and he had a sublimity, you know, right. brush it out. But because he's G-Dragon, he's like, ha, you know what? We're not going to call it that bastard. We're right. going to call it that XX. Right. <laughs> yeah. G-Dragon. Yes, that was nice. He's having a tour, but it's not close enough to us for it to go. It never is. Well, tour, I know, right? I it feel like this is a void is. us. Like, like, you know. They slightly tease red, us. Red headed stench out or something. <laughs> God dang. Anyway. One day. I know. But one. you know what? I, I didn't realize, but I kind of sort of did. Mm. Um, Vicky did a little thing on Instagram of all the people that have to enlist that we're going to lose to enlisting this year. Yeah. And at the end of the list was G-Dragon. I thought we still had another year with him. Well, I mean, he's he's the same age. He's born the same year as me, so he's 28 now. Tell my everybody my age now. Um, <laughs> it doesn't matter. AJ number the number. But, so, technically, in Korea, he's like 29, just about to hit 30. Right. So, I heard the age limit is 31 because they really add, like, two years. Honestly. Right. So, it's really 30, but... Um, so he's got to go by the end of this year or beginning of next year before he turns, I guess. He might as well. I know, right? That's a lot to and lose. And then Top's this... gone for a while. But you know what? No, Taeyong's got to go before G-Dragon, though. Because Taeyong's birthday's in May. Or is it April? Yes. Taeyong's but older then than But then why didn't... They probably put it on there. They might have forgot about it. whoever made it, Sompi. They might have forgot about Taeyong, but they shouldn't have. Right. But, Taeyong, but it is true. Taeyong's right, because I was thinking about it. older right. than the... That's, uh-uh. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> Why did I bring that up? Uh, okay, let's move on. Something a little bit happier. Uh, let's talk about the uh, <laughs> suspicious partner. Oh yeah, that brought that. Sorry, that ruined my mood. But yes, this will bring up my mood. Suspicious, ooh, suspicious. I can't do it. Suspicious partner. Thank you. Episode nineteen and twenty because it's really episode ten. Yes, we have seventeen and eighteen, which is episode nine. Right. And then nineteen and twenty, which is really episode ten. Right. But this was, this was Jiwoo's cute week. Yeah. It it was so adorable. Because last week, oh, we got we cannot just skip over it. Yes, last week oh, how we yes. ended, we knew something was gonna lead up to you know after that. Like, right. what could you possibly do but confess? You know what I mean? Right. And I low key actually kind of riddle rewatch that scene again because that the the kiss scene. Right. Because we got a snippet of it, you know, before, but this was like a full on make out session. Right. And it was, and what I love is I hate that a lot of other dramas the first kiss is usually awkward and yeah. you, you're you're more into the excitement of it because oh wrong because it's their first kiss mm. but I was excited about this because it was their first kiss but then it was good at the same time mm. because I felt like we were intruding after a certain point yeah <laughs> you start covering your face you're just right like, no, don't don't do it no I can't look. You're too beautiful. Oh, and I forgot to me- I meant to mention a couple podcasts Dang, ago, but Vicky killed it with these comments, though. These time comments, like right. I'm looking at it now, and these it's solid. This is a solid block, right? Because 
they're um they, I forgot they have a new system now where you can try to learn the language through how they yes, have it. Yes, yes. I forgot to tell you I about that. I forgot to mention that in a, pra- a previous podcast. And I was just like, oh, wow, that is so cool. But and you I, don't want to do it on the computer, though, right? You can't right, write. because I thought it might work on the app, but it doesn't. It would but be nice if it worked on the app. But yeah, it, that's a lot, though, to be on one screen. Right. But I like that it's... It gives people, I guess, more reason to be on the actual website because now I usually mainly use Vicky through Roku and um, yeah, my app. Yeah, I guess they saw it was lacking in that I don't part. really get on the actual website anymore. I prefer Vicky on on the website because it's user it's more user-friendly. Um, I mean, once you get to the use of the changes, I, I feel I like think, I have too many issues. If I just want to strictly watch, mm-hmm. then I get on the app, of course, because I have right. an Android and I have an Apple iOS. So it, I know both sides. Because what other app, I mean, type what they have other than, well, and then see, they don't have PlayStation, not PlayStation. But anyway, that's a different subject. Right. But um, it's used more user friendly. So I could imagine they want people to get onto the website a little bit more. Right. And I think that was my issue with Vicky's because after they had changed the whole layout of the website to what it is now, they, it is more user-friendly, but I had gotten yo so used to how the previous website worked yeah, that's that true. it took me a while. And I'm still somewhat trying to get adjusted to the new way it works because I don't get on it often. Yeah. So... Episode 17 starts off with kind of G going through his little montage as explaining how his feelings came about or him realizing his feelings yeah. so late. I like the new song that we got yeah, this week, that's too. that's true, that too, that too. It kind of came out of nowhere. You're like, oh. Right. Dude. I was so into the moment. Then I was, I was like, wait a minute, that song. I need to figure out who sings it. Because you know me, I love to get my K-Drama Al songs. Yeah, I'm definitely going to download this. <laughs> Let's do it again. Yeah. And here it comes. Because I don't know how I forgot about the whole hug and everything beforehand because you had to do it. Yeah, girl. I mean, you said I don't pay attention. I don't have that great of a memory because you remember like a lot of stuff that I just don't Yeah, I remember the about. a lot but, of details that most people probably don't but remember. But I remember the important details, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that breeding. These people on Vicky are savages. <laughs> you should be banned from the internet. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so she goes to hug him. I don't really think he felt it, though. No, I feel like she, she was she was lied about hesitant, it. Hesitant, right. Right. Don't really know I'm hugging you back, but I'm gonna hug you. Anyway. Right, right. And see how he moved his hands to like hug her a little bit closer. Right. And she like real confused, like what is going on? That was like I okay. So this is a while ago. I went um my old job, where we had like a Christmas party. We went uh-huh. to a bowling alley, and everybody is of age to drink to partake in alcoholic beverages, right. adult beverages. And one girl, she wasn't quite 21, but she had a couple drinks before she came. And you know, people do that all the time. I'm not condoning it. It's wrong because it's not right. Right. But I'm sorry. I'm like totally talking to the kiss. You are, but I'm, I'm trying to right, look at you. But, but at the same time. <laughs> it's because he like, he does a test kiss and then he pulls her in for a deeper one. Right. He's like, do I want this? I kiss you? Hell yeah, I do. Right. Anyway, back to the story. So she had a few drinks before she came. She's underage, right? And she was just like, oh, my gosh, I'm so happy to see you, Ashley. And she was hugging everybody, not just me. She was hugging everybody. And she hugged me. And she gave me, like, a really snug hug. And I was just like, this girl is, like, tipsy. Right. Uh, and then I walked to the other girl. I said, that was a really good hug. <laughs> <laughs> she made me feel so secure. And that's the kind of hug he had. He was not yes. intoxicated even a little bit. He, maybe he was drunk off her. Right. But. Yeah. And then she was so at a loss after the kiss because, like I said, he did the test kiss and went in for a deeper kiss. Right, right, right. And she went in for it, yes. But she didn't even know what to say afterwards. She was just right, like... Right, So that comes where the, that, that was a good hug kind of hug. Right. And so she's like, whoa, you know, 
attorney. Like, what's going on? Right. What was that? Because you just told me not to like you. And, I, and she's always stopping him. Stop doing that because it's right. not helping me. Right. But then he hugs her like that. So she's questioning everything. everything. Right. She's going through her arms. What did I eat? What did I say to him? What did I wear? <laughs> <laughs> what got him to hug me? Right. And then kiss me like right. that. Right. But what I loved is that he realized his feelings and he didn't hesitate. Yeah. He knew, he realized, I guess, with the worrying about her being there with that guy. Because as soon as he got back to their place, he pulled her in for that hug and then yeah. went to the kiss. Scared. He it's was like scared. He, he's a loser. Right. He was scared. He realized he was a coward before, but he was like, I'm not doing the coward no more. And he just went for it. Yeah. But then we have our guy. The NS guy, I thought he got away from the bad guy in a sense when he kind of jumped off the bridge. Right, right, right. But then he didn't, which I was a little so expecting, but I was kind of hoping he would get away because at this right. point I'm slightly rooting for him to survive. Right, of course. Because we, <clears throat> we thought when he got out the water, we saw him get it on the shore coughing and stuff. I was like, okay, good. You know, he got away. Right. But then later we see that he really did didn't it. Didn't get away. And I'm just like, crap. And I was just like, you must have not swam far enough down the bank if he came back around and was almost like, I've been waiting for you. Get right. That, that is, that's creepy, bro. Like, like my heart heck? like literally dropped when we heard his voice. I was like, damn. Yeah, like, why? Why? Just swim. Swim far. I know you're right. tired. Come on, bro. This is your life. It's life or death. It's right. the fittest, man. Go, go. <sighs> so. But, yeah. But then Jiwoo puts on his A game, A game. Yeah. He was like, because they did have a talk again that night. I think she went out and laid her stuff on the line, but never got him a chance to talk. Or was that in the I think it was morning. He went running or something. I'm thinking, it, I'm confused. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, because I think she finally got herself collected, and they went out to get water, and they bumped into oh, each other. Oh, yeah, and then and she then they put talk. her cup down. Did she put her cup down, and he picked up the cup and That's drank from it? That's the next morning. That's the next oh, morning. Okay, okay, okay. I'm she, confused now. Right, okay. This is, okay, after they go back, she finally walks back out after the kiss, and she's kind of like, I understand that we were in the moment. It won't happen again. I won't read into it. Da da da. She's yeah. kind of like not giving Jiwook a chance to speak at all. And he kind of just like, she's like, let's just forget about it. He's yeah, like, he just still has that, that word on his lip. Uh, right. Da, 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 ba, ba, ba. <laughs> and she's just like, uh uh-uh. uh. Let me finish. Let me say my piece and I'm done. Out of here. All right. And if she goes back to the room and doesn't give him a chance to speak, and the entire time he's kind of trying to tell her how he feels at this point. But then the next morning happens. Yeah. And he was like, before she even gets a word out, he lays out his piece. Yeah. But the thing is, too, though, I figured she knew what he was going to say. Now that I'm thinking about it, she was she knew what he was going to say. So she's trying to cut him off. You're not even going to try and convince me. <laughs> no, we are not doing this. Okay, right. we're done. Bye. <laughs> True. But then he said his piece is more. She couldn't get away from you. You live together. You can't get away from right. that. That's why we love cohabitation. Yes, because they bring those moments. And... This is when she was, he, no, this is how we started off the conversation because she's coming up and drinking. He was like, are you done? And she was like, yeah. So he took the cup and then he took his sip from the same cup. You know what I love? When people do indirect kisses, but they don't make it like a big explosion, explosion about it. Right. And we're just like, oh, we saw that. We saw right. that. Right. And then he lays his heart out on the line and then he decides to walk away. No, he decides, oh, I forgot the cup. Hmm. Then he goes against the cup, and he's like all up in in Bunky's back space at this point. It reaches Slurping around it. her, gets mm. the cup, and goes away. Right this out. water is so sweet. <laughs> Stop licking the rim. Right. I was like, he is so teasing her at this point. He knows what's going on. He yeah. knows what it's doing. But Um Bunky has this. She has this thing about, she's like, no, I am not going to break my will. I am not going to back down. Yeah. She does that for the majority of the episode, even though he's teasing her and teasing her. The entire, I think, yeah, for basically 7 and 18 is him basically teasing her. Right, right, right. And her trying to keep her composure and not. But it's so cute, though. He's teasing her, but he's trying to remind himself to breathe, too, after Mm. he does the teasing. So as much as he knows it's affecting her, it's affecting him on the same type of level. Yeah. 
Um, so I guess we don't want to talk about each episode all the way through, but I guess we hit on the main points that right right now because we could go on for hours about right. them going back and forth with this <laughs> because all their moments that they had these few episodes was so enjoyable. Right, 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 right. Oh, okay. So episode eighteen. <laughs> um, the what's his name? The uh, the guy who got district killed. attorney. Yeah, the district attorney. Jong or Jang or whatever his name is. Yeah. He asked um, the ex-girlfriend and the friend of me, because I'm not good with names. Right. Uh, I don't to, even remember her right, name at this point. Right. To be, to reopen his son's case and look into it deeper. You know, like really delve into it. Right. See if you can find who the real killer is or concrete evidence that, what's her name? Unbunghi. Unbunghi. Yeah, is the actual culprit. I mean, so... he said stu- he'll still steady believes that Umbongi is the killer, right? But he's telling them basically, if she's not the killer, you need to prove it to me that she's not the killer, right? Because now they're kind of thrown into this, in the suggestion that Jiwook planted the other evidence to get Umbongi off, and not realizing that they actually caught the real weapon, but you sabotaged it by planting right. your fake weapon, right? 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 <clears throat> right. So. We'll see how that goes because I honestly feel like the ex girlfriend, despite her having her issues with Umbungi, but I think that's on a more personal level. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think on a professional level, I think she can't, she doesn't believe that Umbungi is the killer. Yeah. Because I feel like despite her going, because at the end of the, was it this episode or 19 and 20, she ends up at the house or whatever. Yeah, I think that was. And 19. showing that she's going to do it. Yeah, you know, investigate. She was telling them, you know, I'm investigating this right. case again. But I don't think she was doing it as in a threatening way. I kind of felt like she was just kind of throwing it out there, trying to see the read a reaction. But I feel like deep down she doesn't believe that. She Umbungi didn't did. have to actually tell them at all. And granted, because she still probably wants to keep that relationship that they had and not dissolve it altogether. Right. She's going to come <clears throat> by the house, stop by the house, because she still wants to get back with him, even though. I think at this point she realizes it's just not going to happen. Right. But she's still sulking in the fact that it's not going to happen. Right. And, I think and just say, you know, hey, I'm investigating this. So don't ask me later why I'm following you or I'm looking into this or you heard this and that. True. You know? Very valid. I feel like she's just kind of coming clean with it. So it's not, I feel like she's hiding something from them. Right. So later on they could pull it. You know, well, you hid that you were. Right, right. True. And I feel like she, despite her being the cheating chick she is. Yeah. I feel like she's honest to a sense because I don't feel like with the friend, I don't think she cheated more than once. I think that was a one instance yeah, and they got caught. And, and, and because who she cheated with, <clears throat> I would hope it, it was just like a one-time thing. I would hope so, too. Um, so I give her that, but I feel like I said, I don't think she, she's looking at the evidence and she's all, I think in her, I feel like it's all sort of circumstantial. It's nothing concrete enough for right, me to wholeheartedly right. believe. On a personal level, I don't believe she can do this despite my hubei thinking that anybody can kill yeah which i feel like to a certain extent anybody's everybody's everybody is capable of killing yes but it's just one thing to actually do it you know what i mean right so and i'm sorry to reference harry potter right now but there was a point where where harry asked Sirius black his godfather before he died you know about evil or you know if you think Voldemort or somebody was really evil and he was like he was or no he said something about Snape and he was just granted he hates him too but he was like you know the world isn't divided into good and evil true it's all about the choices you make right. whatever choices you make make you who you are so you don't you're born and oh he's gonna be evil oh you're born and he's gonna be you know right. good so. and then that's like that Korean tale that they have, they've been telling in dramas a lot recently about defeating which side of the wolf yeah. the good wolf or the bad wolf right. determines your character and because someone was saying I forgot how the story goes where they're like they're two wolves are fighting or something inside you and then the child asks so who wins and then the parent tells them whichever side you feed more right so basically if you feed your good side more you're going to make more good decisions and if right. you feed your bad side more you're going to make more bad decisions so yeah makes sense <sighs> but anyway moving on and i like that the the little jibook's little entourage uh, right they're a little <laughs> family in a sense they are the um the CEO guy, I just Bond, CEO Bond. He uh, Chief Bond, you mean? 
Mm, C.O. the old man. Oh, okay. Yeah, not bong or bun. Bun, C.O. bun. C.O. Bun. bun, excuse me, the Y messes me up. <laughs> C.O. bun, how he's kind of the one helping them knit together even more. Right. Like, because you always have to have that one person in the group who you're always bickering with. Right. And everybody else is either ignoring you, picking sides, <laughs> right. or just wa- <laughs> sitting back and watching the show. And it's so funny, like, he's always picking fights with them, Bonhi, but every time he does it, nobody picks his side, even if they don't know what, even if they do or don't know what's going on. Right. They automatically just like, whatever, no, you're wrong, why you do her like that? <laughs> right. You're old. Right. And it's so funny, then Chief Bong, he's like, what does he say? He's the father? Yeah, he's yeah. the father who's raising the three kids, or four kids. And then, uh... What is the CEO Bun supposed to be on Un- Un- his son because of <laughs> the bet he made? <laughs> so it's kind of funny. It, I like it. It's like the little knit group. Jiwook might pout sometimes about how they act. But yeah. It's his own little kind of blended together family. That's true. That's true. And what I also loved about this week is I was a little afraid that Un- Bong was. Oh, like, last week. Yeah. Yeah, because it's about to be the new right. week. <laughs> That Umbahi, I felt like she was going to use her sympathy to let the killer in a whole lot more. Yeah. But I love that she got her own natural suspicion mm. this week. And it's out of, and the killer kind of put it on his own self to make her get the suspicion about him. He may think that it's Jiwook or whoever else is around her. Right, suspect, right. But it's his own act that kind of made her kind of look at him a little bit. Right, hmm. right, right. And I feel like, well, I'll stop saying that. I... I feel like, I think he's trying too hard to be a good guy in front of her. Right. When if he had just stepped back and let it go, there wouldn't have been that more suspicion there. Right. Like, I feel like he's sitting in front of her saying, hey, look at me. I bet you can't think I'm, bet you don't think I'm the killer. Ha ha, I'm right in front of you. Uh, I'm behind you. Like, go, go somewhere. And nobody would suspect you. Right. Granted, g Wook still would have. You probably would have met up with him. But I feel like she probably would have backed you for a little bit longer if you weren't always, in, if he wasn't always in his face her face like right. that. Right. Like, like, why do you keep contacting back? her? Right, right. Because she even said it too. She was like, she's like, why are you calling me again? And he was like, well, I kind of wanted to tell you something. And she, then after he told her, she was like, so why are you telling me now? Right. Like, and it's like, when she was, he was like, oh yeah, I got a new job, this and that. Or he told that to the other guy. And I just feel like he's divulging too much and it's like, as if he wants to get them to know them on a closer level, level right. so that they see him as a friend and by oh he would never do that no right. bro you were a, a client now you just need to go away right <laughs> they won your case bye right so I, I feel like as smart as he's supposed to be or most supposed to seem you should have foreseen that it's like chess you're supposed to think two moves ahead right and, and he's I not feel like he's thinking about right now right I feel like he's thinking two moves ahead, but in the wrong direction. Maybe, yeah. Because he hasn't seen this either. And as if somebody that's psychotic and a mass murderer, for you not to get caught, you have to think more than right. one way. But that's why I think like, he can't get rid of the NSI guy completely because he's this cleanup guy. Yeah. And I feel like he needs him because he's, he won't, yeah, he so cleans he won't, up his mistakes. But how, he would have to like kidnap him and keep him hostage and then take him. Then he had to bring him to the scene of the crime for him to clean up. Unless he just gets somebody new, but I feel like he can't get anybody new at this point. Right. He's too far in his little, whatever plan it may be. Because right. I feel like he has a certain number of people he's trying to get rid of. Because after he's done every murder, he does that count thing. Yeah, he kept saying, saying that. So, I, I feel like yet. he's up for, he has a certain amount of people he's after. Yeah. And then after that, he's going to kind of be done for a certain extent. So... But, I mean, that's like any serial killer. They they don't do it consistently. Like, you can't mark the time. That's only on, like, CSI and stuff where they have it. Oh, we found another body. Oh, we just found one last week. I feel it's more like, because it's a modern-day killer, not like Jack the Ripper right. going through a town. Where they don't have much to do, so that's right. what all they're doing. Right. So, I feel like it should be farther apart. So, I don't. he might not kill that guy, but I just feel like he's going to be one of the bodies that they find. But what right. would he kill him for? Because it feels like he seems like he's killing him for a specific reason, a crime they committed. Right. So, and I don't know. Yeah, I feel like it's going to be. You've never seen this movie. It's called Seven. No. With, Jack, with Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman. Right. So there are two cops and Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt. 
and they're finding this. They're they're looking for this serial killer <clears throat> because he's killing his uh, his victims for their sins. Seven, the seven deadly sins. So they figured out after a couple of of murders that this is what this guy did. And that's how they got gave him the name. You know, right? The 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 seven the seven killer or whatever. So they're counting number. Oh, well, they have one more. They have greed, gluttony, and this and that, and lust. So maybe he's that type of serial killer. They always have to have their themes. Right, true. So we'll see how it plan spans out. I'm looking forward to it. But at this point, everybody except for CO Bun is already kind of suspecting the killer. Yeah. At this point. Well, we don't even know his name. What's his name? Hunsu. Yeah. Um, and what I love is that even Unhook, <clears throat> granted he's suspecting him because he's overheard conversations at this point, but he's yeah. up front with them. He tells him up front, but he kind of laughs it off with his usual fake That's laugh. Right. Ha ha ha. I can't even do it. Ha 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 Right. So, but he's up front with it, so it's like, at the, uh, yeah, you kind of just put yourself on the market for everybody. Right. Yeah, that's why I was like, bro, you need to step back. Like, stop being in these people's faces. They're just going to keep getting to know more about you and you that you don't want to know. Right. But then we get a little shine of unhook for 19 and 20 because of the case that he gets. Right, right. Which is a little complicated, not complicated, but in a sense, I kind of read it a little bit and figured how it might have actually ended up. Yeah, the kill, the how murder. the actual murder, in a sense, happened because it really wasn't a murder. Because the case, he's defending a client who didn't commit a murder, but she wants to go down for a murder. Right, because she thinks her son did it. Well, I mean, we find out that later that she thinks her son did it. Right, but then we <clears> find <throat> out her son didn't do it. Do it, it and, and but the thing you were saying that too. But doesn't she get charged for stabbing him? Right, because she messed with a corpse. And that's the thing. I, that's why I was like, why did she, he you, was already... How much ble- time can you get from messing with a corpse? Are you trying to fabricate evidence, maybe? Right. Charge her with that? It's, we don't know law. We're right. just guessing here. I don't think it's... If it, it's still not... It's probably not more than five years. Jeez, that's a long time, though. I think in Korea, they do months. Because they have a lot of dramas. Granted, these are just dramas. People get it out after a couple years and they're charged for murder. Usually in the United States, you get 15 to life or 30 to life. You're in there for a long, at least a decade. Right. So, five <laughs> years? That's a long time for tampering with evidence. I'm just, But I'm just dating with my mindset of right, how right, American right. court runs. I don't know. She may really only serve a few months for it because she didn't commit the murder. She just stabbed the husband, I guess, to make it look like at least her her DNA would be there on the body, I guess, right, in a sense. Right. But she could have just left it and not done it, but whatever. Yeah, that's just a whole other case. I wonder if they're going to keep doing that through the rest of the drama. Like, giving us other cases here and there, kind of just to break up the, the romance and then, I guess, the dynamics of the entourage. And right. then... Because we know the killer is the main case they're going to have right, to deal with. Right, But, of course, they won't finish that off until later on. Right. Because we all we know, we're despite us getting quite a bit of information, we still don't know why he's doing all these murders. Yeah, and we I gotta, feel like we're gonna. I hope it's not a sob story because I'm still not gonna feel sorry for him. That's right. not an excuse to kill like that. Right, and he's just like Joyce about it. But um, right. they did mention like trauma, childhood right. trauma, and it's always stems down to that to making them very. I think to to sympathize them a little bit, humanize yeah. them in a sense. And I feel like that some people may humanize them. Like, for, for me, I look at it this way. If it comes down to you're a murderer, I can't sympathize for you. Right. And it's not like... Because you took someone's life. Right. It's not, And it's not like manslaughter where it's accidental. Right. It's like legit murder. You plan this out. Right. That's like life in prison in mm, the United States. Yeah. 60 to life. Right. You're going to be dead before you even get probation. But well, anyway... What I loved is that um, we also learned a little bit more about Ji Wook's past. Yeah, more than I thought. I, that's what I meant to say. Actually, is that what I love is that this is where we're getting a bigger picture of everybody's character dynamics yeah. as the drama goes on. Yeah, we automatically assume a lot of stuff from the beginning, but then we get a deeper, a wider look at it mm. as we go down the line, mm. because Ji Wook's mother. We thought was his birth mother. Yeah. But we come to find out in episode 20 that she is not his birth mother. His but mom's she, best friend. Who adopted him. And C.O. Bun is his 
adoptive father. Yeah. So, because I always wondered how they were connected, but I just thought maybe he was a mentor. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's what I thought too. And then, but the way he talks, they talk to each other and support each other, especially me, support each other, especially in the beginning. I figured, you know, he knew his father, yes, mm-hmm. and that maybe he's somebody closer than that. Like he right. helped, he helped raise him at a point. Yeah, I figured that too. But then. The, this made it even more real, like. He but really, then he didn't call him uncle, so I was like, it can't be, you know, because usually if they have like a mentor with their father, his right. friend, they call him uncle or something like that. True. But he didn't. He called him CEO Bun, Bond. Right. So, so we Bond. learned that Bond. his when his dad died, his real mom died at the same time. Not a couple months. Yeah, a couple months down the road, or a couple weeks from what uh, she was upset. He said he died from a broken no. heart. I don't know. I yeah, think she was. She, she was sick. She got into the hospital, but he stemmed it from the fact that the way his father died. Probably she was distraught. So, I like that. And then he kind of opens a little up to Unbung He and kind of right because explore. he confessed and he's just like you know I want to get to know you basically on a better level. I want you to get to know me. Right. They kind of had a more deeper conversation than they've had. For the entire drama so far. Right, 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 right. So you can really feel like he is really falling in love with her because he's trying to make this a deeper connection than just a simple I like you type of thing. Yeah. Because I don't think that's something he easily tells anybody. Granted, he's not an easy open book person either, but to tell someone even so that, yeah, the, the person that you hear calling me calling mom is not my birth mom. Yeah. But to also, I feel like, He's not trying to necessarily convince her, but let her know that this is not infatuation or just, you know. Right, I'm not I'm playing attracted, with your feelings. Right, I'm not trying to play with you. Like, I really like you, and I really want to get us, I want us to get closer. Right, like, I really want to try to pursue this and make this type of thing work. Right, right. So, I liked that. And, but we also realized that Unbong Hee has her own little history with her dad that right. she's hiding. So, I mean, we I figured it had to be something with her dad, but sometimes in dramas, they usually don't always cover it. Right. They kind of like, oh, he died, or, or... Usually it's he died, though. Right. He died, or something like that, and they don't really go too deep into it. But the way that she was looking at the picture, and so I feel like it's going to be at least a little bit of a subject. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to this week that I feel like we're going to get a little bit deeper into everything. And I'm looking forward to seeing more of Ji Wook trying to tempt Eun Bong Hee. Yeah, the uh, temptress. Right, and having to remind her to breathe. <laughs> breathe. <sighs> <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm so looking forward to that. And more of those lovely kisses. Yeah. I yeah. hope we don't... Granted, I feel like it might be a while before we get yeah, another kiss. Yeah, because that, that was pretty steamy. Was pretty, we right. usually don't get a lot of steamy kisses at once. You've right. got to wait a couple more episodes. And this is not airing on TVN, so I'm not expecting a whole lot. No, he got to tongue her down or nothing. No, I'm just saying, right. you know. But, I mean, please, TVN is, is bound to down. give you a little bit more skinship <laughs> than SBS will. Hmm. So, but... So, anything else we got to talk about? Not really. I watched a couple good videos here and there. Oh, nothing not... nothing special other than that. And I forgot to talk about my dramas. I actually started two dramas, guys. And I made it to the halfway point on both. Oh. I started Tunnel and Mystery Queen. I don't know. I feel like I'm in a cop drama phase unintentionally. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm enjoying all of them. Mystery Queen is a little bit more comedic. And I was able to kind of marathon the first half of the uh, drama a little bit easier than it was Tunnel. Tunnel's still good. Don't mind it. But it's darker. It's darker. And it's a little bit more remnants of Signal, but not on the same level. Mm. So Maybe that's what they're trying to go after, Signal. Right, because I think it's from, not the same writer, but I think it's from the same... Production crew? Yeah. So it's it very has that same feel, and it, it kind of has the same dynamics of past and present connecting stuff. But how the case is is explaining out in Tunnel, it's a little bit more connected and deeper than it was in Signal. How about, um, I Remember You? Similar, but not... It is, because I feel like I'm... 
I'm just learning certain things because I'm at the halfway point. Yeah. So I feel like it's on that level of I remember you, uh-huh. where it's a lot of connections in the past and stuff, but they don't realize it. Right, right, Like, right. you as a viewer with I remember you, you knew. Yeah. But with Tunnel, you don't completely know, and you start to kind of guess some of the things, mm-hmm. but you don't completely, until it's revealed, you're like, what? No way. Right. But honestly, with, with uh, I remember you, I was still surprised about certain things. Not who the killer was, because I, right. I mean, we knew it, and when they revealed it, I felt like they're trying to make it slightly, not huge, but slightly bigger than it right. was. I feel like, like with, like, with I Remember you, you, they were like, you. we know you guys know, right? but we're just going to throw it like it's supposed to be a reveal anyway to you right. guys. But there was other things in I Remember You that I did not see coming. Right. There so. was a lot of stuff that I didn't see coming, but I felt like the stuff that they knew we already knew wasn't that big of a reveal because they tried to make it seem revealish moment, but they were uh, like, you we knew that already. Right. Like we know you guys know, but we just trying to make it a moment anyway. Just, just go with it. Okay. Right. Basically. <laughs> and then, uh, with mystery queen, I love it. And the, th- and the messed up part is I feel like I'm slightly rooting for a shift that I don't think is going to happen mm. because she's supposed to be Najma, a married woman in that drama. In Tunnel? No, in Mystery Queen. Oh, is she? Right. Oh. And I'm slightly shipping her with the male lead because they got this kind of really good chemistry. They have a good partner chemistry, but it's enough that you feel like you could see them being romantic with yeah, each they other. Yeah, probably, they're probably trying to... Does it say romance under, like, the... No, that's why I'm not expecting it. Oh, okay. So but, they're probably just going to, like, it's like, we have such good chemistry, but she's married. It's like, right. but she's married, so we're not going to go there. But they're not putting her husband in the best light either. But, so they can't throw romance in. I don't like, I don't appreciate that when they do that. Granted, I feel it's not necessarily when you're married, you're married. I feel like just so you can get the main couple together, you have to make the husband terrible. So it would be like, not want him. I, they, I feel like they, I thought they were doing that, but then when the female lead kind of talks about love, yeah, it kind of makes you feel like she doesn't really know what love is, and I feel like she just assumed yeah, she was, was in love, love with, with her, her husband, oh. but she may not really be. That's tough stuff. There. So that's why I was like, I like it because it's, you feel like they're kind of trying to make it typical, trying to make the husband look bad. He's not innocent in all of this, and he's not cheating in a sense either, but... I mean, the drama's over with, so I don't know. Are you going to watch it? Because I don't want to give too much away. What's it called? Mystery Queen. Okay, I know what you're talking about. I wasn't I wasn't really going to watch it. I okay. might watch it down the line, far down the line, but it's not. Okay, so I can, you probably won't remember Big this percentage, tidbit. yeah. So, but the, the, it's not a running joke, but a line in it is, at least in the first half, is that people that knew her husband from work instances is like, I didn't know he was married. I thought he was single. Some bullshit right there. Right. When you don't act like you marry. Right. And that I don't. And as your co workers, they should. Not to say that you have to divulge everything to your co workers, because I don't, but it's certain things that you just. You know, you you don't have to let them know, but they just know. Right. And it's okay because they're your co workers. You see these people a lot. So right. if you don't. They don't know you're married. You've been working at this job for a while, I'm assuming. Right, because he's a what pretty the, What are you doing? What are you doing on these nights out when y'all go out as a co-worker's drink and all that kind of stuff? Right. Or to a restaurant. So. I feel like they're hinting at something. Not necessarily cheating, but he's flirting a lot. Right. And so that's why I took it as, like, because I don't, he doesn't seem like the type, like, he's easily cheating. Right. But he's not giving off the vibe that he's a married man. Mm. That's not a good, that's not good. That's right. Terrible. And she's. Do I know this married man? The actor, I feel like you've seen him and stuff, but I don't think you would know him. Because I, I don't know him by name, but I know him by face. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and then with Tunnel, Tunnel's really sad, mm. but I love the connection that they're going. And then there's a little ship in there that I feel like they're aiming for that I didn't see coming. I didn't yeah. think... Well, those are fun. I didn't think that romance is going to be a factor, at least in the present day story. In Tunnel? Yeah. Because it deals with a past cop coming to the present day. And it's not his ship. He has a life in the past day. That sounds just like, what you call that? What you told me to watch? What, Signal? Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. It has a similar promises, but it's not the same. Oh. Because the way the past is dealt with, the past and present connection is dealt with differently in both dramas. 
Well, of course, it's supposed to be a different drama anyway. But right. I'm just saying. So right. It's, it's, that's why it's a similar. So is this like the year of cop dramas? Is that the theme? That might be the theme this year. Mm-hmm. Yes, because what man to man is not really cop, but it's cop ass because he's a bodyguard. Yeah, right? and that's on Netflix. Right. And then I said, I said, oh, it's up on Netflix now, and it's over. Yeah, right. I mean, if it's on Netflix, it is over. No, but they were said they were gonna put up the first half and then put up. Don't the... do that, Netflix. That's that's not even your style. Just put up <laughs> it all at once, okay? Right, Don't but do that. like I noticed it now, but Don't I feel like at Hulu. this point, I think it's probably all the way up at this point now, uh, or about to be all the way. Like up. I plan to watch, it, and I keep forgetting I want to go watch that main guy's other drama. I forgot his name, but uh, he was in one called Bad Guys. And anybody who I've seen comments that they like this drama is so good, right? So, but I'm, it's not on Vicky or John Fear, so I have to watch it on another website. But I believe right. the another website that I usually frequent has it, but I just haven't gone and clicked to play it. Yeah, so that's what I've I have time off this week from work. I'm having a little staycation, and so that is my plan is to kind of knock out some dramas. I I meant to finish Weightlifting Fairy before we d- finish this podcast. Yeah, but I you got. But I got sucked into Mystery yeah. Queen and Tunnel, so I haven't gone back to watch the final three episodes. That's understandable. I usually leave a lot. I have a lot of dramas left in my currently watching because I have, like, a couple episodes left. Right. So but, yeah. I, I think by the next podcast, I should have finished Mystery Queen and Tunnel because I intend to finish them before I have to go back to work. And I'll probably pick up another one before I go. So I feel like I'm going to knock out. I plan to at least knock out three. Hopefully, I'm hoping to. I'm gonna try my best to stop go. planning for it and just do it. Don't plan for it because I do that a lot too, and I don't end up doing it. Right, I just because I got a lot of pre-recording from my other channel today, so to get to give me room to kind of go watch when I want to watch. Yeah. So I feel like I can get through them before I have to go back to work on Monday. Um, and I plan to start at least one more and maybe try to finish the last five of Flower My Prison. Hey. Sorry, because I need to get rid. I need to knock. Try to knock out one that I have, not necessarily on hold, but uh, basically on hold at this point. Yeah, that is almost done. So I can at least try to knock out at least four dramas before I go back to work. Um, I'm still watching my same dramas. Ultra Joy isn't over yet. Um, there was a Friday episode of Perfect Match, and I watched it at like thirty percent. I think it probably was much less than that, thirty percent. And I was like, I don't care. Let me just see what happens. Right. And I didn't care for most of the episode. I didn't watch the last bit because I wanted to see what, because some couple stuff started to happen, which I'm really watching it for. Right. At this point. And the couple stuff started to happen. I was like, oh, let me stop. Let me wait for it to be, you know, so, subs so right, I can right. see this part that I really want to see with subs. Right. I still need to go back and finish like, the week before's episode with full subs. Mm. So I'm not loving it. And I was just thinking that today, maybe I should go back and watch. I was like, maybe I should wait till it's finished at this point to go before I go back. And just marathon the last year. Yeah. Episodes. Cause I probably would appreciate it more instead of me watching it week to week. Right. And getting frustrated, not having the subs. Right. So I think I'm going to make a vow and I'm putting my three fingers up guys. <laughs> I, I, you can't see this, but this is a promise. My hand is over my heart. I wonder if I should do it the other way. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Okay, right <laughs> hand over my heart. I will not, in my drama, Asian drama watching career, ever watch a Taiwanese drama week to week again. <laughs> I will that only, is a big... I, you're right. I will only, only watch fully finished and subbed Taiwanese dramas. Marathon style, Okay. <laughs> I'm not going through this again. And I, and then it goes through a stalemate. And I always expect stalemates with Taiwanese dramas. Right. I mean, I still love them regardless. But I feel like it makes them worse. It makes me want to lower my score on MBL because I have to keep waiting. And I feel like marathoning those kind of dramas is better. Because I've only watched two. With Murphy's Law of Love, I wasn't watching it as it was airing. So I didn't have to deal with the subbing issue. Yeah. Well, when I was watching Just You, I had to do that because that was my first Taiwanese or Taiwanese drama, and I was watching that week to week. And then as it got to the last half of the drama, it took them longer and longer to sub episodes. Right. They do that with Taiwanese, and on then Vicky, I kind of really did that where up. I waited a, waited to watch like the last four episodes because I was tired of waiting for subs yeah. to be finished. Well, not just subs, but I'm waiting for like the story to do progress, and so much that happens, too. but then so much doesn't happen. That you know too. what I mean. And that's how Taiwanese dramas are. So I feel it's better when you watch one full episode and it's like not much happens. But then you go, you can go automatically to the next episode 
and see what else. And then the episode after that. Right. Okay? So you know this isn't that bad. That whole wait wasn't that bad because I still have more episodes to watch. Right. So. Yeah, but that's all I'm watching. Yeah. So this is kind of a calm week news-wise and music-wise, despite some dramatics in a sense. Yeah. But um, I like that it was a calm week. We didn't have a whole lot going on. Just drama watching. Yeah. Just plain, simple drama watching. Some other people came back. Oh, I know uh, NCT 127 <gasps> is making a comeback. Right. I don't know if the song came out yet. I haven't checked back. But, but I think NCT, you were supposed to have a comeback, too. Please. Oh, if, my Unless I read the God. title wrong, because I swore I thought NCT, you was coming, having a comeback as well. I only saw the stuff from 127. Okay. Then I might have read wrong. Yeah, you might have. That'd be great if they did. But I feel like they don't know how to outdo Seven Cents. Almost. I feel like that's but where they I feel they're... like you can, though. You're right. Like, it's if you, been a year. If you blow up like that, anything you come out with that at this point has got to be good. Right, because, it, yeah, if it's yeah, it's June right now, it's been a year since that song. Yeah. You guys don't think you can top that after a year? Come on. I, we know you can. Jesus. Right. Like, nothing against NCT Dream. And I'm Dream an SM stand in or some NCT... aspects. Right. So, I believe in you, though. Come on. NCT right. you, please. Well, I mean, we'll love 127. Granted, I don't love everything from 127. So, I'll probably take it with a grain of salt. But still, I'm going to go watch it when it comes out. Right. Uh, one, 127, I'll be more inclined to pay attention to. Dream, I have still not watched any of their videos. Yeah. Because I just know they are not catering to me. And it's just going to be a lot of little boys. And short shorts. Right. You know, like back in the day in the 1920s and stuff where little boys didn't wear pants so they became men. And they wore, like, the shorts and the yeah. tall socks. That's how I feel it is. But, but I'm honest. Just watch, you, ha- you don't have to watch the videos. The music videos are cute and stuff. And they're cute little boys. You want to pinch their cheeks. But their performances are better. So I'd rather watch NCT Dream stage performances than I would want to watch their videos. Yeah. Because N- uh, NCT is good performance over- overall, at least with dancing. I like to see their choreography. Yeah. So not necessarily listen to the song. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like NCT Dream is a group that I'll wait for them to age up a little bit before I fully pay attention to them. Not to say that I'm ignoring them or anything yeah. like that. But, but you just know you know what they're going for, and you're just not interested in them. Right. Yeah. You so, gotta like You ain't gotta So, like in 127, they're a little bit more, but I feel like I take their music with a grain of salt. Like, it's kind of a hit or miss. I either like it yeah. or I won't like it. Yeah, me too. Definitely. So. Well, NCT this, you, where yeah. you at? Where you at, boo? Right. We're waiting for you right here. Come on. Um, I think that's it for this podcast, guys. It's yeah. kind of... It's been one of the shortest podcasts we've ever done. Right, because I think this is maybe even shorter than our very first one. I don't know how long the first one was. The first one, I think, was like a little bit over an hour. Yeah. And we're under an hour now. Oh, yeah. We can do it sometime. Yeah. We can slow weeks. The only reason why this one even seems somewhat this long is because we talked about Suspicious Partner. Yeah, that's true. Imagine if we didn't have Suspicious Partner to talk about. 30 <laughs> minutes tops. Right. <laughs> this little snippet podcast. So, guys, um, go ahead and hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe. And I guess we'll talk to you guys next time. See you. Bye.